Hello. In this session, we will look at an introduction to IAM roles. So in the last session, we looked at how you can create your policies. So in, in some of the previous sessions, uh, we looked at how you can create your customer managed policies. And then we also looked at how you can create your inline policies. Once again, policies are nothing but these are your permissions. So whenever you create your IAM identities, like let's say you're creating an IAM user, you will need to define the permissions. You will need to define the policies as to what these users can do when they log into your AWS account. So that is where we can make use of your policies. Now these policies are nothing but these are your JSON documents, which simply defines the permissions or the access or the actions that the user can do when they log into the AWS account. Now in this session, we will be starting off with your IAM roles. So here we will look at an introduction to what are IAM roles. And in the next session, I'll show you how you can create your IAM roles. Once again, before we start off with this, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So let's get started with this. Now, your IAM role is also an IAM identity that you can create in your AWS account and that has very specific permission. So like how you have your IAM user, we also have an IAM role that can be used to uh, provide necessary permissions to your IAM um, uh, user AWS accounts. So an IAM role is similar to an IAM user in that it is an AWS identity with permission policies that determines what the identity can and cannot do in AWS. So your IAM role is similar to your IAM user as well, right? So IAM users can be used when you want to share your AWS account with other people. Now your IAM role can also be used to define the permissions. So however, instead of being uniquely associated with one person, a role is intended to be assumable by anyone who needs it. So we know that one IAM user is for one um, user only. So you can have one IAM user account which can be associated with only one person. Now, likewise, if you have 10 people, you'll have 10 different IAM user accounts. Now, what we can do with your IAM role is we can create one IAM role and we can start uh, that can be utilized by anyone who needs the necessary permission. So maybe you can have some additional permissions defined as an IAM role and your IAM user can assume that role and get those additional permissions. So uh, also a role does not have standard long term credentials such as your passwords or access keys associated with it. So if you remember when we create your IAM users, we have credentials associated with it. We have the username and the password associated with it. Now with your IAM roles, we do not have any passwords associated with it. And we also do not have any access key or secrets key associated with it. Then how do we authenticate? What do we use for the authentication purpose? So instead, when we assume a role as an IAM user, when we assume the role, it provides us with a temporary credentials for the role session. So as long as we're using that role, temporary credentials will be generated and that is what will be used for the authentication. We will not have any long-term credentials or like your passwords or any access key or secrets key associated with it. So we can use these roles to delegate the access to users, your applications or any services that do not normally have access to your AWS resources. So we can use this IAM role to kind of control um, additional privileges or additional access as to what your user can do or what your applications can access or what your services can access with your uh, in your AWS um, uh, resources. All right. So for example, you might want to grant users in your AWS account access to resources they do not usually have or grant users in one AWS account access to resources in another account. So one of the use case of your IAM role is, let's say you have one AWS account and in this AWS account, you have two users, let's say user one and user two, and let's say you have another AWS account. Now, instead of creating a, another user in, let's say in this second account, we can utilize this existing users and we can give the access from one AWS account to another AWS account by making use of IAM role. So in this second AWS account, we can create an IAM role and we can allow telling that, okay, this user can log in to the second AWS account or my user two can log into the second AWS account. All right. So that's one use case of your IAM role. So at any point, if you want to give access to your IAM users, from one AWS account to another AWS account, we can make use of your IAM roles. 
or you might want to allow mobile app so let's say you have a mobile app and you want to allow this mobile app to use your aws resources so maybe let's say ec2 instances or s3 bucket or uh, your database there also we can utilize your iom roles so instead of embedding these uh, access keys so instead of storing the credentials inside the mobile app we can leverage this iom role to provide the necessary access to the aws services so when you do not want to embed aws keys within the app where they can be difficult to rotate or where users can potentially extract them we can make use of your iam rules all right so sometimes you might want to give aws access to users who already have identities defined outside of aws such as your corporate directory so the third use case you can have is let's say within your organization you already have a corporate directory all right so let's say you are already maintaining a corporate directory and you want to utilize that corporate directory to give access to your users we can make use of your iam roles for that also something like let's say you're using saml authentication or auth o authentication you can use that existing directory to control the access to your aws accounts or you might want to grant access to your account to your third party so maybe let's say you have some auditing team that needs to audit your aws resources we can uh, give access to the third parties as well all right so for these scenarios we can delegate access to aws resources using an iam role so these are the different different use cases where you can make use of your iam role to give access to the resources so these are like you won't be creating any iam users there won't be any credentials associated with it uh, you will utilize this iam role which will have temporary credentials associated with it and that will give the necessary access so we will be looking at some of the examples for this in the upcoming sessions so an iam role can be used by the following so an iam user in the same aws account as a role so an iam user can use this role and i am user in a different aws account than the role so from one aws account to another aws account a web service offered by aws such as amazon ec2 elastic compute cloud so from one service to another service an external user authenticated by an external identity provider service that is compatible with saml 2.0 or open id connect or a custom built identity broker so once again we can use iom rules to allow access from one account to another account we can use iom role to give access between aws services we can also use iom role to give access to your applications or your identity providers to log into the aws accounts so that's basically your introduction to iom roles that's all for this session thank you once again before you leave please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and if you like the video leave a like and please share the video